types of gene action again, I repeat, when we say gene action, this refers to the way in which certain genes exert their effects on the body. So genes may be active only when they occur in pairs of alleles during the diploid phase. That means in the haploid phase or in the gametic phase, the genes are still inert. So we have two general types of gene action. Number one, we have additive gene action. So the phenotypic effect of one gene adds to the phenotype of its own allele or other genes in the genotype which affect the expression of the trait. So in this case, a pair of allelic genes contributes independently. Kaya nga adds eh. So a pair of allelic genes contributes independently to the G or genotypic value. Okay? So later in the next slide, there will be a graph that illustrates this type of gene action. Right? So, the second type of uh, gene action is the non-additive gene action. So, the expression of the phenotype of one gene does not necessarily add to the expression of the other. But, members of allelic pair may interact to give a certain phenotypic effect. Or, two entirely separate pairs of genes may interact with each other to produce a particular phenotype. So, for letter A, we are referring to dominance gene action and then for letter B, we are referring to epistasis or interaction. Okay? So, for further illustration, we have here a graph that uh, shows uh, three genotypes. We have homozygous dominant A, heterozygous A, and homozygous recessive A with phenotypic units 3, 2, and 1, respectively. So, note that there is no sharp distinction, okay? There's no sharp distinction between genotypes, but many gradations exist between these two extremes, okay? So, as you can see in the graph, an additive genetic effect is the linear combination of the individual genetic effects. So, why is it called additive gene action? Because you can just add up the effects of each other. So, it is known to affect many economically important traits in farm animals. So, examples of these economically important traits are growth rate, milk yield, egg production, carcass quality, and quantity. Okay? Moving further, non-additive gene action effects or non-additive gene effects include different non-linear combinations. So, sa additive, linear. Sa non-additive, non-linear naman. So, it may be classified as dominance or epistasis wherein the phenotypic expression of one gene does not necessarily add to the phenotypic expression of the other. So, una, we have here dominance. So, dominance is the ability of a gene to conceal the expression of its allele when paired together in body cells. Ibig sabihin, when a dominant gene is substituted by a recessive gene and there is no effect, either positive or negative, then it is called a dominance gene action. So more specifically, the interaction between alleles at one locus means that the diploid genotype at each locus needs to be considered as a whole to determine the phenotypic effects. So dominance can be complete, incomplete, co-dominance, no dominance, or over dominance. So let's discuss them one by one. So for complete dominance, the homozygous dominant and heterozygous individuals show the dominant phenotype. So it is evident in the graph that there is no effect when the recessive gene, so this recessive gene in the heterozygous genotype is replaced by a dominant gene. So this one, okay? So, in this model, homozygous dominant A exerts the same effect as heterozygous A. Ang common example dito is bull color. So, those individuals with genotype homozygous dominant and heterozygous exhibit the black bull color. Okay? So, for the homozygous recessive, the sheep exhibit white bull color. Okay? So, I hope that is clear. In the case of no dominance, co-dominance, or incomplete dominance, all genotypes, as you can see in the graph, so all genotypes have distinct phenotypes. So, the example is in here is coat color in 
scatter. So, ayan. The homozygous dominant A, the phenotype is red coat color. For the heterozygous, roan coat color. And the homozygous recessive, the color, coat color is white. Okay? So, distinct phenotypes for the three genotypes. Okay? So, for the overdominance, the phenotypic effect in the heterozygote, so as you can see in the graph, the phenotypic effect in the heterozygote is superior to either homozygotes. Oh, so as shown in the graph, okay? So let's move on to the second type of non-additive gene action, and that is epistasis or also called as interaction. So when we say epistasis, the presence of a gene suppresses the effect of a gene at another locus, okay? This is otherwise called non-allelic gene interaction. So why non-allelic? Because this is an interaction between alleles at different loci. So sa dominance kanina, the alleles are interacting on the same locus. Ngayon, sa epistasis, the genes are interacting at different loci. So it is of two types, recessive epistasis and dominant epistasis. So for recessive epistasis, the, the, uh, the genotype... Uh, either dominant or heterozygous conceals the effect of all alleles at the second locus. Okay? So, for the dominant epistasis, the recessive genotype, the homozygous recessive genotype, conceals the effect of all alleles at the other locus. So, please recall your Agri-21, specifically on the uh, epistasis or interaction uh, gene action. Okay? So we have here a diagrammatic representation of the various, uh, various types of gene action at the chromosomal level. So actually, these are the types of action of gene action rather governing a polygenic trait. Okay. So based from my discussion on additive and non-additive gene action, alleles may interact with one another in a number of ways. So these are the alleles. Okay. So these are the alleles or the pairs of genes. Okay. Alleles may un interact with one another in a number of ways to produce variability in the phenotype or phenotypic expression. So, the action of genes may be detected only from the phenoty phenotype. So, assuming that the effect of the interaction or the effect of the environment is constant over the range of possible genotypes, the environmental effect can be ignored. Okay, so if the interaction, so G by E, the interaction, if you remember the term G by E, if that is equal to zero, then the environmental can, effect can be ignored. And the phenotypic value may be used to compare the G. Okay, so if you, re, if you recall, your P is equal to G plus E plus G by E, and when G by E equals zero, then you can just equate the phenotypic value with the genotypic effect. So, by the way, these are the pairs of alleles. Again, these are the pairs of alleles. Okay, first, first pair of chromosomes, first, second pair of chromosomes. So, these are the alleles, okay? The letter A represents the additive gene effect. So, additive, and then letter B is the dominant. So, say for example is, this is dominant A, and this is Heteros, uh, I mean, uh, recessive A. So, then this shows, following the dominance gene action, the heterozygous genotype will show the same as that of the homozygous dominant A. Okay, so, another we have additive by additive genetic effect. This is letter C. So, different loci. Again, if you remember epistasis or interaction, the alleles are interacting between different loci. So, letter D, we have additive by dominance genetic effect. So, additive by dominance genetic effect. So, letter A, if you remember your letter A, that is additive. And then, letter B, that is dominance. So, two loci are interacting. So, alleles at two loci are interacting that will give you uh, additive by dominance. Okay? So, letter E, dominance by dominance genetic effect. Ito, sa dalawang um, loci, we have letter E, dominance by dominance genetic effect. So, if you remember, your B is dominance, or for B, dominance again, the interaction between the two, you have dominance by dominance genetic effect. So, if you remember your types of gene action, you have additive gene action, 
we have non-additive gene action. So, yung non-additive gene action, it covers from B, C, D, and E. Diba yung non-additive gene action is divided into two? Dominance and epistasis. So, yung nakablock, dominance gene effect, that is for dominance. And then C, D, and E, these are the types of or classifications of epistasis aside from the recessive and dominant epistasis. So, ito, yung additive by additive genetic effect, additive by dominance genetic effect, and dominance by dominance genetic effect, these are the subtypes of epistasis or interaction gene action. Okay? So, I hope that is clear. So, we have here some notes, some important notes to remember. So, polygenic traits are governed by many additive genes. So, as you can see here, many additive genes. So, these additive genes contribute to the expression of their phenotype. So, they have a high, medium to high heritability. So, when we say heritability, that is the portion of your phenotype that is due to your, that is due to your genotype. So, they are less affected by crossbreeding or uh, inbreeding. That is why it is best to do selection as a tool for genetic improvement of these polygenic traits rather than crossbreeding. So another we have traits affected by non-additive genes. So these are lowly heritable. Ibig sabihin, konti lang ang portion ng phenotype that is due to their genotype. Okay, that is why they can be improved by crossbreeding. And then last, we have low to medium uh, heritability traits. Okay? Because of this, they may be probably affected by additive and non-additive genes. And they show improvement with crossbreeding. Alright? So, we have here a cross. So, as an example, we have here a cross between P1 and P2. These are both purebreds. The mating between P1 and P2 produces F1 or your first filial generation and then the F1 individuals cross among themselves and this produces F2. Why the, what does this diagram imply? So this diagram shows that in the production of F1, there can be three possible scenarios. So number one we have here, the average performance of the purebred parents equal the performance of the F1 since additive gene action does not produce heterosis. So when we say heterosis, this is the superiority of the crossbred animals. So yung crossbred animals na sinasabi, yun yung F1. Okay? Over the purebreds or the parents with respect to a particular trait. So why does additive gene action does not produce heterosis? So this is because, sabi natin kanina, polygenic traits which are governed by additive gene action are not improved by crossbreeding. And ang heterosis, nakukuha lang sa crossbreeding. Alright? So, another scenario, possible scenario, can be the, for number two, we have here, the superiority of the parents, of the purebred parents, over F1 is due to non-additive gene action. So, in other words, when the purebred parents are more superior in terms of performance than that of their F1, the trait is governed by non-additive genes. Why non-additive? Because the performance of the parents P1 and P2 does not add up to produce the performance of F1. And then last possible scenario, we have the superiority of the F1 generation over that of the purebred parents is due to transgressive variation as a result of additive gene action. So, what do we mean when we say transgressive variation? So, the phenotypes of the progeny, so yung F1, lies outside the range of what, of that which occurs in the parents. So, yung performance ng F1, mas superior pa sa P1 and P2. So, the performance of F1 lies outside the range of that which occurs in the parents P1 and P2. So, I hope that is clear. So that would be all for this video. I am your teacher Hazel. Thank you very much for listening. And I hope you learned something.